What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob filling in for Tom today. He'll be back Tuesday. I'll be with you Monday as well. Uh, regarding the market, we have everything a little bit down. Um, Meta's up a little bit. Nvidia's up a little bit. Um, the banks obviously were far higher this morning. We'll take a look at that a little bit. Um, one of the things that was interesting is at the open, yeah, the ES Mini really pop up quite a bit. Um, give me a second here. And then we just had a complete just decrease in volume, or excuse me, decrease in uh, value here, uh, high volume on that bar down. It's been trying to get past that 41.60 uh, for the past, uh, for the last uh, bit of the day. Um, so we'll see what happens. Light volume every time it's testing it. So we'll see if we get a little bit of a, a test again. Um, today, uh, we'll talk about the banks, which is huge. Um, I want to talk about a little bit. I, yesterday, I wanted to speak some on the, the hydrogen fuel cells that Toyota um, had been kind of developing and that broader market in general. Um, and we have a bunch of pretty interesting stuff to show you. Boeing, this is big news today. Uh, Boeing dropped about 5%, 5.7%. And what went on with this is they had a uh, piece of their, their uh, 737 Maxes um, and the company that they sourced it from was having production issues. That company is a Spirit Aero Systems. Uh, as you can see right here, uh, Spirit really, really took the dive today. Let's get it on a bigger time frame here. Go on a yearly. So, I mean, just massive volume down. Um, there's a little piece in the back wing. It's not a uh, safety issue, Boeing is saying. Um, but regardless, it's going to... There is some theory or some talk that it's going to hinder their production uh, numbers. So we'll see that comes uh, to fruition on that end. Um, however, Boeing is going with alternative suppliers. This is pretty bad um, for Spirit Aero Systems. Um, you know, when you're such a small company like this and, and your, your major buyer is something like Boeing, when you fail, it's kind of hard to recover a little bit from that. Is, is this drop really meaningful in Boeing? You know, they're, they, they might meet production targets, right? If they're, if they're using other suppliers, there's a chance they'll meet the production uh, um, quotas that they have, uh, and it's not a safety issue. Um, this is a bit sad, because as you can kind of see from October of last year, you really had a lot of very attractive momentum building. I mean. You know, even the beginning of end of September, but of course, uh, on the 26th and 25th, you have this really nice volume here. So, this was kind of a it's kind of a shame for Boeing, but just if you hold this stock, just just keep a lookout. I mean, I don't think this is going to really cut in too deeply. Um, so, we'll see what happens. Um, Nvidia, interesting. Tesla, um, excuse me, Elon Musk bought a bunch of their GPUs um, because he wants to get into the AI business. And he had made <laughs> some conversation that I think he wanted to buy uh, ChatGPT. Um, and they were or open AI. They're like, no, this guy is so spread thin. I, I, I don't understand how he has the capital for this. Um, I don't see what his long-term kind of solution for this is, or his long-term plan at least. I get so nervous every time he uh, says he's going to add some kind of new breadth to his, uh, uh, to his business. It's, it's just kind of strange. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more on chips as well, especially with Intel. Um, but first, I want to talk a little bit about um, the OPEC cuts. And I spoke about this yesterday, right? And this is interesting. This is kind of going in fully to this recession talk, right? So IEA says risk oil supply deficit um, and threatens economic recovery. So definitely in the developing world and uh, countries that are not the U.S., this absolutely could be a major problem. Um, you're seeing this cut even reflect in Russian oil, which is now way, way selling way above and being purchased way above by Asia, namely China. Um, than the, than the cap that the West had placed on it um, for sanction purposes. Um, 
So consumer countries represented by the IEA have argued that tightening supplies drive up prices, of course, and could threaten a recession, uh, while OPEC Plus blames Western monetary policy for market volatility and inflation, which undercuts the value of oil. Interesting. Um, oil market balances were already set to tighten in the second half of 2023, with the potential for substantial supply deficit to emerge. See, the IEA saw 2023 demand a record 101.9 million barrels per day, up 2 million barrels per day in the last year, and on par with this prediction last month. And this kind of explains why this, uh, this sanction that the West has tried to place on Russia isn't, isn't really going to fly. Um, the IEA said it expected global oil supply to fall by 400,000 barrels per day by the end of the year citing an expected production increase of 1 million barrels per day from outside of the OPEC Plus, uh, beginning in March versus 1.4 million decline um, from the producer's block. So yesterday, what I was saying is I was looking at the CPI, and one of the major um, components that was pushing down the CPI was energy, right? And I was showing how there was... Um, a little bit of deployment from the Strategic Petroleum Reserves uh, done through March, and that uh, all these kind of revelations with increasing prices um, and lowering, um, it, mainly lowering supply came in April. We're going to see a little bump in the uh, uh, United States. I think, though, what I wasn't looking at yesterday when I was saying that we might get a far higher CPI afterwards is, you know, one, obviously, we're going to get the same amount that we were going to for the same price up until May. You have some major analysts saying, I mean, even the Fed, saying that there's probably going to be a recession. Recessions obviously drive down the price of oil because more people aren't moving around. It's not as in demand as it is when the economy is chugging along fine. Also in the same vein, you know, America um, has the, you know, we have the capacity to be the largest producer of oil if we aren't currently. I know it kind of flips sometimes, um, but you know, if anything really happens where it gets to a point where oil is getting way out of control, energy is getting way out of control, um, I do believe that uh, something like increased production uh, in the states will probably be a reality. Um, with the recession, again, I do see that being kind of deflationary pressure uh, on the price of oil um, if this 400,000 cut um, does make some kind of a splash. Uh, folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. If you have any questions, ask me in the den, ask me in YouTube. You can call us as well. You can email me at jacob at tfnn.com. We'll be right back.